Good evening and welcome to the virtual red carpet premiere of Bright Lights. I'm your host, Shana Stone with Maurice Johnson. Good evening, I'm so excited to be here. And as you all may know, January is Human Trafficking Awareness Month and Bright Lights, the mini series, sheds light on child human trafficking. So today I'm gonna to be interviewing the cast of Bright Lights. Good evening. Then let's welcome Dr. Eric. Oh, hi, we have Scoop. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing very well. We are gonna go ahead and get right into it. We have our youth actors that are in bright light. So let's welcome AJ Scoop. Williams and Calissa Nie. How are you doing this evening? Good. Good. AJ, can you can you tell us how, our, our audience a little bit um, about the character that you play? His name is Zaire. He doesn't really talk English good. And he came from a country called Haiti. Okay, thank you so much for that, Aid. How are you, Calissa? Can you tell us um, the name of your character and a little bit about the role? Um, the name of my character is Courtney. She um, doesn't really like acting that much, and she doesn't um, she doesn't like to like have to do anything with her teacher, like literally anything. Thank you, Calissa. Can you tell me what inspired you to take this role? Mm, probably because I want to get more roles in acting. So if I got this one, maybe people would see it and I could get even more roles. Absolutely. I totally understand. That makes sense. Hi, Janae. Hi, Jaden. How are you? Hi. Good. Hello. We're doing good. That's good. I'm so excited to be here with you today. So you two are also uh, cast members in Bright Lights. Can you tell us, uh, tell our audience, um, we'll start with you, Janae, about your uh, character and what inspired you to take the role? Uh, well, my character, her name is Crystal. And what kind of ex inspired me was, I don't know, it kinda, it, her character acts just like me. So it's pretty easy to do her role. And what about you? 
Oh, um, my career too. These are uh, Haitian, right? So, um, oh, Pierre, sorry. Uh, my character name is Pierre because he's Haitian, you know, that's just a little bit about him. What is your role or, you know, what is, what is um, about human trafficking uh, since you started this project? Oh, I learned a lot. I learned that it can be like just, I learned like they, they can just be normal people, I guess, in your life. And you will just never know that they would do that type of thing. Yeah, that, that's very, very, very true. Very, um, we, yes, we do understand that. So, you know, with January being Human Trafficking Month, I am so, I just want to say I'm proud of you all for taking such a serious role in a serious uh, position. It's a lot of, it's a heavy subject matter. And uh, unfortunately, this is uh, some people's real lives. And I just wanted to commend you know, each and every one of you for uh, making the commitment and bringing these stories to life and shedding light on a very, very uh, serious, serious topic. So um, while we still have time, I'm going to go ahead and just ask you all a few other questions. If you don't mind hanging out with me today, I surely don't mind hanging out with you. And um, what was it like working through Zoom? So to my understanding, well, not to my understanding, but we all know we're all still in the midst of a pandemic, right? And we're still filming virtually. I mean, look at us today. We're on a virtual red carpet. Who would have ever thought, I would have never thought I would have been on a virtual red carpet. But can you tell, AJ, I can, uh, well, yeah, I can start with you if you don't mind. Can you tell me or mom, what it was it like filming from home? Or filming from Zoom, like on, on camera. What was that? Well, it was fine when it was when I was getting used to it. Yeah, definitely takes some getting used to, right? Right. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, did you have to learn how to use your phone and do that in a different way? Or mom, did you jump in and you had to help out and learn how to be a camera woman? I had to jump in quite a bit, actually. Um, it was a bit of a challenge, but I think we all, you know, just work through it together. And I think we're going to have a good turnout. Absolutely. I totally agree. And Calissa, what was it like for you working on Zoom? I know this is not your first time, so you're probably a pro by now. Tell us what your experience was like coming on Zoom. On Zoom. I was kind of sad that it couldn't be in person, but um, it was it was like a lot to be used to because like we had to like do a lot of stuff and like when you had to record, have to make sure the light was all perfect and stuff. <laughs> that sounds about right. Well, I want to thank you all for hanging out with me today. I had such a pleasure catching up with you. I'll see you guys backstage for the premiere of Bright Lights. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. We will have Dr. Katrina Pullum next, I believe. Uh, Dr. Katrina Pullum is the CEO of, excuse me, <coughs> Pull Corp Media. And she's also a, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> And she's also a cast member, so I'm definitely excited. If you're just joining us, uh, my name is Shana Stone with Ladies in Film and Television, and we're here at the virtual red carpet premiere of Bright Lights. And Bright Lights is a mini series that sheds light on child human trafficking. So we have a house full of guests, and here she is. The extraordinary Dr. Katrina Pullum is here with me today. She is the CEO of Pull Corp Media, and she's also a cast member. Dr. Katrina plays Detective Devereaux in Bright Lights. Let's welcome Dr. Katrina. That's Lieutenant Devereaux. Oh. <laughs> Devereaux in Bright Lights. Yes. How Exciting. are you? I'm doing well. Dr. Good, Katrina, good. 
So you play Lieutenant Devereaux. And yes. I love how the term told me that Lieutenant Devereaux and Dr. Katrina have some similarities. Can you go ahead and tell our audience what inspired you to play this role? Um, what inspired me to play the role? I think I was, you know, I was written in um, based off a conversation that um, Jeanette and I had when she told me she was writing this. What she didn't know is that for about 15 years, I was a forensic investigator, meaning that I investigated crimes against children. And one of my specialties, I was certified by the FBI, actually, I went through a training under them um, to do investigations to investigate human trafficking cases. And so I sat on the human trafficking task force, all of those things. I remember um, being in Louisiana when um, we had a big football game, because mostly that's when trafficking really comes out. Any event that's going to draw a big crowd, um, we put together task force to go out and save children, women um, during that time. And so they actually implemented the social worker therapist piece um, as well, instead of just having law enforcement be a part. So I did that for years and I'm still a consultant um, in those areas. And so this is a very important cause. It's one of my national causes that I, I actually champion. Um, so it was a pleasure to play this role and consult on this project. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And that is a huge call to action for you to have work uh, hands on and then to turn around and, you know, play a character that's very parallel to some aspects of your real life. Um, so you so we talked about, you know, how parallel your life is to your your character. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what um, what tonight you know is going to entail? I'm I'm really um, excited to be here, and I, to my understanding, not only is this a red carpet premiere, we do have yeah. um, panelists uh, yeah. this evening <laughs> to discuss um, child human trafficking. Yes. Um, I am very, very excited um, about the panel. They were handpicked. Um, I admire each one of them um, that's there. So our moderator is the Emmy Award winning Rebecca Lopez. I love her to death. Um, this is what she does every day. She's a crime reporter and she a report on stories of human trafficking and any crimes against children. Um, on the panel, we also have the assistant, one of the assistant U.S. attorneys, Mariah Bam. Um, she, her office is letting her come participate tonight. So we're very excited. She prosecutes um, cases against human trafficking. We have Dr. Myrna D um, Dartson, who is a LIFT member, um, a friend, a sister. She is a psychologist who is championing and advocating and working with survivors of human trafficking on a daily basis. And we also have Tanya Stafford Manning, who is not only a national advocate for human trafficking awareness, but she is also a survivor. And she has an amazing story that is coming to the page just soon. And last but not least, Bright Lights would not be here without the creator, um, our social activist herself, the screenwriter and filmmaker, Jeanette Johnson um, Greenwood um, will also be on the panel. So I'm very um, excited to see, you know, to sit in on that discussion um tonight so it's going to be really great well thank you so much for taking the time to hang out hang out You're with me welcome. evening we're going to bring on some of our adult cast members to tell us a little bit about their role in bright lights thank you so much dr katrina let's welcome our cast members our adult cast members of bright lights to the stage 
Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me. Good evening. These ladies look absolutely lovely this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Marlene, you play Miss Petrie. Is that right? Miss Petrie is actually something else. She starts out being one thing and then she uh, reverts, she reverts into something else. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a lady that takes people's, especially little children's uh, confidence and welcomes them, welcomes them in. She's the acting teacher, so they trust her, but she's not that good of a person in the end. Yeah, totally understandable. What was it like to prepare for that role? Uh, it was something else because, of course, she's not that good of a person in the end. But yeah, totally thing of, she's a um, person that is true to form because a lot of times the people that you know can be in human trafficking. And that's... Uh, the thing about it. So it was it was a little difficult getting used to her, but we finally finally got it together. Thank you. And Michael, thank you so much for joining this evening. You play Detective Mosley. Can you tell us a little bit about your character and what it took for you to get into character knowing that this is based on real life? Uh, yes, thank you for having me. Yes, uh, Detective Mosley is a very, um, I'm going to say she's has a lot going on. She actually lost her daughter to child trafficking, a uh, 15 year old daughter. So she knows a lot about it and she's made it her mission to um, investigate um, child sex trafficking crimes to the fullest. You know, she's also adopted two wonderful uh, boys from Haiti and uh, she's very serious about her job and she is determined to shut child trafficking down. So, yes. Yes, both, both of you, dynamic performances and both of your characters and uh, really blown me away with the authenticity that you were able to portray and you know the way that you both got into character if you have a, a takeaway for us uh, what what are you hoping you know that our audience uh, will learn um, as it relates to this uh, human trafficking what, what do you what what's a takeaway i hope that people become more educated in the signs of someone that is uh trafficked and how that they can prevent and teach younger children what to expect and how to uh, protect themselves. And I'm hoping the community will get involved in human trafficking so we can put a stop to this. I would say, yeah, I would say the same, that the takeaway would be, to, as I said, be in your child's business. If you see something, say something. And if you uh, have a concern, don't ignore it. Follow up on it because it could be the least expected person. And it's follow your instincts. It's real and it's happening a lot more than we can even imagine. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me and hanging out on the red carpet with me this evening. I am looking forward to seeing and hearing about your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. For bye. Us. And if you're just joining us, I'm Shana Stone, and I'm going to be joined with Maurice Johnson, and we're hosting the red carpet premiere of Bright Lights. We do have some other guests in the building. We have some of our other cast members that I will be interviewing. I am excited to interview. I believe we have, is it Trinity? We have Trinity backstage. Let's see. Give me just a moment. Okay, and uh, give me a moment. It is live. 
And I am just checking the schedule. Oh, we do. We do have Trinity coming on in. I don't know if she's having technical difficulties. If I can have uh, one of the producers pop in, if we will, if we need to move on to um, another segment, just let me know in the chat. Okay, do we have Lucretia here with us today? Yes, we do. Good evening, Lucretia. We Good have evening, Lucretia. I'm sorry, I changed my background. Oh, no worries. Can you hear you? Can you hear me now? I have no sound for some reason. No sound. Okay. I can hear you. I'm going to see if we can have Jeanette go ahead and put you backstage and we're going to keep it going. It is live. It's okay. I can hear you. I'm going to see if we can have Jeanette go ahead and put you backstage and we're going to keep it going. It is We, okay. Trinity is also having tech technical issues. Definitely not to worry. This is a live production and things happen. And give me just a moment. Okay, so couple of technical issues this evening, definitely not to worry. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to toss it over to my co-host, Maurice Johnson, and he is going to go ahead and start the interviews with our panel guests. Thank you so much for joining. Good evening, everybody. My name is Maurice Johnson, and we are here on the red carpet of bright lights. I am so excited to get down to the nitty gritty. We have some amazing panelists, which I'm so excited to talk with about a, um, a great topic. Human trafficking is very important. Is I'm glad that we are doing this to bring awareness to, um, this is actually the Awareness Month for human trafficking. And I'm, ex I'm excited. I'm so excited, you guys. And um, here in a minute, we are live. So give us a minute if we have having technical difficulties or whatever the case may be. Just bear with us one good minute and we will be right with you. And so um, I am currently waiting for our panelists to come on uh, live with us. And um, let's get it started. Let's get it started. Hope everyone is having a good evening on tonight. And if one of the the tech um, person can go ahead and let us in, so we can enjoy our conversation on today, we may be a little bit behind schedule, but it's okay. Good evening, Miss Rebecca Lopez. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Actually, I've been battling a little bit of a. A cold, I, I got tested for COVID uh, four times and it's a sinus <laughs> infection. It's so um, but I wanted to be here for, with uh, for this panel. Uh, so Listen, <laughs> we are so glad to have you. Thank you so very much um, for joining us on tonight. Um, yes. We're just gonna get dive right into it. So just give us a little bit, a brief description of who you are. We all know uh, Emmy Award winner. We appreciate you. And this is a very heavy, serious topic for you. So just give us a little bit about who you are. So I am the criminal justice reporter, senior criminal justice reporter for WFAA. I have been there ooh, almost 25 years and 35 years in broadcasting. And most of that has been covering uh, law enforcement and criminal justice. So I'm very well aware of this issue. I have actually been on raids when Dallas police have 
raided places where they went and rescued women that were being yeah. um, uh, trafficked. I have been, um, I've done stories on young girls who met people on the internet and then almost got uh, kidnapped. Uh, an incredible, oh. one of the most incredible stories I think I ever did was a young girl who uh, met a guy on the internet. He was already had her passport. She was on her way to the airport and one oh, of wow. her friends told her parents and somehow they intervened, but that guy was known by Interpol and others for kidnapping young girls and then um, trafficking them in other countries, but then also eventually killing them and harvesting their organs. It is like horrific what happens wow. out there. So I have uh, done all a myriad of stories on this issue. So I, I do think it's very important to raise awareness. Wow, that is very deep. Like it's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that people are unaware of. Yeah. To that, to that in, um, extent, excuse me. And so my question is to you, we're going to keep it short and sweet, okay? Sure. We're going to have some fun too as well. <laughs> so being that January is Human Trafficking Month, how do you necessarily say that we, how can we bring awareness to human trafficking? Any, you know, as far as pointers or just give us some brief details of how we can bring much greater awareness to human trafficking? Well, honestly, what you're doing here today is um, yeah. a big step, but also, um, you know, we're always looking for stories on the news for ways to raise awareness, whether it's domestic violence, yeah. uh, breast cancer awareness month, and we try to put a human face. And sometimes human trafficking can be a little bit more difficult because of the, you know, privacy issue. And also sometimes what happens to these young girls, they, they don't want to talk or um, women as well. But um for me, it's always been about telling the people stories. Yes, we can sit here and tell numbers. We can talk about statistics of how often this happens. But until we actually see the humanness and the human face behind it, that resonates with our audience. And I think that then at that point, we we keep the dialogue going and we raise awareness and we uh, let people know what's happening, um, whether it's to your young daughter out there or or something that's happening out there with, you know, in the community. And so it's important that people reach out to us to reach out to media and to reach out to reporters and tell us those stories. That's the best way to raise awareness. That's amazing. And I'm so glad that we are having this amazing premiere, this red carpet. You know, it's just the simple things that we do to bring awareness, like you said. And we definitely appreciate you on all aspects. Thank you for your time and just thank you for your insight. And thank you for being an advocate for change in the community. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. We have our greatest pleasure. <laughs> our greatest pleasure. So um, I believe we do have some more panelists on set, but thank you so much, uh, Ms. Lopez, for that information. We greatly appreciate you. And I am ready for the next panelist that I have the pleasure of interviewing. I'm so excited. Let's keep this ball going. Let's keep it rolling. We got some great things in store. We want to all watch the movie. We do. Hello, how are you? Hi. How, How are, are you? you? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. I do want to first off by saying thank you You're for welcome. taking the time on your busy schedule to join us for this amazing premiere of Bright Lights. And thank before you. we get started, for those of them that are watching who don't know who you are, give us a brief description of who you say you are. Who I say I am. Yes. Who the men say you are, huh? That's yeah. biblical. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm Tanya Stafford, Manny now, recently married. Congratulations. I'm a trafficking survivor. Um, oh. I was sold at the age of 13 here in Dallas um, by my mom for drugs to a man that bought me. He kept me for 10 years. Wow. And during that 10 years, I was beat, raped, and almost killed. I had three children while I was in captivity. And my children, as I always tell people, is my reason for living, my reason for breathing, my reason for being here. Um, they're all grown now. Um, I endured a lot to be here, um, to be a testimony to others and to give a testimony to others and to survive. I survived um, and I give hope. I give hope where there is no hope. 
Um, I founded my organization called It's Going to Be Okay. Yes. Um, she's my baby. Yes. Um, congratulations. Thank you. She's been surviving for seven years. Wow. And um, amazing. I rescue, restore, and rebuild now. So I actively do rescues. Um, I have a safe home. I have several safe homes. Wow, several. <laughs> Yes, I have several safe homes that um, we house out of. So we provide direct services, um, yeah. trauma-informed care, trauma-informed therapy, life skills, job readiness, um, clothing, housing, food. Uh, we do it all. So that's what I do um, on a daily basis is um, when I was rescued by my neighbor, uh, she told me she didn't, she didn't save me to sit on it. So I had to wow. reach back and grab girls that look like me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. I mean, I service all, all girls because we have white females that's in our program. We yeah. have Hispanics, um, but girls of color in particular um, that I do take you know, interest in to go out and rescue and actively uh, save. So, yes, I am out here doing it. <laughs> um, um, just doing, just making a difference in this world. And my motto is leave them in a better position than we found them wow. because that's what was done to, for me and for my children. My neighbor risked her life to uh, save me and my children. Yeah. I mean, during that time, I, um, I did go to school um, for a little while and I had all three of the children in the hospital. And so I teach hospital staff now I teach wow. schools, um, so I speak at. Um, I speak all over <laughs> wow. speak all the world now to um, share about human trafficking. Um, I got a bill passed, House Bill twenty two ninety, making wow. January Human Trafficking Prevention Month here in the state. Yes. Of so that's why we celebrate. Congratulations! <laughs> that's amazing. Yes, we got some more bills passed this past uh, session. Uh, making sexual oriented businesses, lifting the age uh, limit um, there and not to operate around schools. Yeah. Um, so I'm out here using my voice and my testimony to um, to bring light to so, so, so much darkness Yeah. and um, to raise awareness. Um, so that's why I lend my voice so much uh, to the wow. bills and different things like that. So that's why y'all really celebrate January as human trafficking. Yes. Us. It's because of little old me. You um, have definitely. That's, that's amazing. And to be a survivor, yes. that is a God-given blessing. A lot of people don't make it out. No, they, they don't. don't. And I'm told I'm part of the 1% that still is, you know, here and in my right mind. Yes. You don't look like nothing you've been through here. I know. I'm cute, huh? Yeah, you too. You cute. I, I know. I'm so cute. Um, and I'm a grandmother. I'm a grandmother of five. No way. I would have never thought I am, that. I am a grandmother. I know I don't look like it. I you am so cute. What? A yeah. five. A five. Yeah, wow. they are amazing. Two girls and three boys. I am so proud of wow. you know, my children. I'm proud to be a grandmother. I'm proud to be a wife. Um, just wow. you know, just be an example for um, the girls that I yes. serve every day um, to you know show them that there's hope. There's hope okay. after tragedy. There's hope after molestation. There's hope after rape. There's hope after abuse. There is hope after almost dying. Yes. There is hope and there is still good people left in this world that don't want anything from you, but yep. to see you be great. Um, and so that's what they don't see a lot is someone always wanting something from them. But we show them that there are people in this world that do not want anything from you, but to see you make it. And yeah. so I just serve as hope. I just really serve as hope. Yeah. Well, Miss Tanya, listen, we thank you so much. I wanted the world to know who you are and what you do. We thank you for being a survivor and keep your voice lit as our thank you. says. You are I lit. Keep your voice you. lit. Keep your voice heard. And we thank you so very much for, for gracing our carpet on this evening. Thank you. My thank pleasure. <laughs> So we do have another panelist. We are Miss um, Mariah. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you doing? I am wonderful. Thank you so very much for gracing our carpet on this evening. And just a brief synopsis, a synopsis, excuse me, two seconds. 
who are you? Who does the community say that you are? Well, I am an assistant United States attorney, which means yes. I'm a federal prosecutor. And I work in our Northern District um, of Texas in our Dallas office. That is amazing. And so, like I said earlier, we are bringing awareness to human trafficking in the community to this month is the month of awareness. So one brief question for you, very simple. What are some of the red flags to look for in regards to human trafficking? A lot of people don't know, you know, so what are some of the red flags that we can look for and also avoid once presented? Well, you can definitely look for red flags when you are um, a, an internet user. Honestly, yeah. I think some of the biggest red flags could be noticed um, by people if we simply educated them. And by people, I mean um, users and seekers of online or commercial sex. Um, there's a lot of people out there who are think that that's not an issue and they think right. that it's no big deal to log on and to find a personal ad and to go seek that out now it's uh now it's a felony um yeah. in the state yes. of Texas to do that um so hopefully the word is spread about that which can be prevention but also um just keeping your eyes out for what that means if somebody finds themselves in a situation they still need to be educated to know mm -hmm. hey this doesn't look right or that girl doesn't look like she belongs she really mm -hmm. doesn't look like she's the correct age there's never a correct age to be honest but That's she, true. Really, she really looks like she's not in a good situation and we need those yeah. people to then go and report yeah well th that's amazing a lot of red flags that you said like it's so for some people it may seem simple but it's actually you know right there in your face people like you said the internet the internet is very very tricky very very you know advanced this time and it's only going to get more advanced moving along in the future but um thank you so very much i don't want to hold up too much of your time we got some more people we would like to interview but thank you so much there you guys have it assistant u.s attorney miss mariah pronounce your last name for me bame bame yes so there you guys have it thank you so very much i appreciate you and we look forward to seeing you at the premiere of the movie thank you thank you so much my pleasure all right, let's keep this ball going, keep it going. I hope you guys are enjoying yourself. Hope you guys are getting some a lot of um, information. And let's keep the ball going. Good evening. Good evening. How are you this evening? I'm well. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'd like to first off by saying thank you um, for taking the time out your busy schedule. Um, Everybody, this is Dr. Dartson, um, psychologist and advocate for human trafficking. And we just want to, like I said, thank you so very much for joining us on today. And just give us a brief synopsis of who you are and what you do in the community. Well, I'm a licensed psychologist and I do a lot of uh, forensic psychology, a lot of mm -hmm. psychological evaluations. I work a, a great deal with child protective services, uh, with uh, children who've been victimized parents who have been perpetrators or even, yeah. you know, I see a lot of uh, parents who have been victims, victims themselves who, uh, and so it's just like, as when you look at um, this as a whole, there's it was something that we're so quick to judge people, especially when I see um, parents, that, parents that come in from child protective services, they yeah. may have uh, substance abuse issues, but underneath all of that, 90% of those people have been victims of abuse, whether it's sexual yeah. abuse, physical abuse, a combination of both, you know, so I just, um, I, I, my heart just goes out to any victim. And sometimes I just, I, I love to get the bigger picture when, when I'm dealing with people uh, who, who uh, have issues, because I say that there's, uh, everyone has a story. And yes. we have to, and it, unless we're able to sit down and, and, and speak with people, peel back these layers, People can never heal from sexual exploitation and abuse unless we stop judging and stop and take the time to assist people. And that's the biggest problem that I find in my profession is that, you know, especially people who go through the system, they're judged. You know, no one ever stops to consider uh, why a person is using substances. People, her people tend to, uh, uh, there's such a shame and a stigma attached to human trafficking, sexual abuse, sexual exploitation. Yeah. So, you know, it just affects people differently. And when I, what I receive on my end in my profession 
I see the ramifications of the lack of assistance, the lack of regard, yeah. the lack of help, the shame. Yeah, that's amazing, Dr. Darson. I really do appreciate that information. Um, so just one brief question for you, and we're going to make it quick, and we're going to move on to the next um, panelist, OK? okay. So the victims of the uh, human trafficking, do they more so come from low income families or how does that, you know, or poor backgrounds, you know, what do they usually come from as far as what do you see on a day to day basis? You know, it could just vary. It, you know, I don't think that the, uh, I think that some demographics are more susceptible, mm -hmm. um, uh, more indigent populations could be. But, you know, uh, perpetrators will target any child, you know, no one's safe mm -hmm. from trafficking. You know, it could happen to anyone from any socioeconomic background, any race. Yeah. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. You know, a lot of people try to, you know, visualize like, oh, you know, this or that, the other. But um, that that what you said makes perfect sense. And I do want to say thank you so very much for gracing our carpet um, for the Bright Lights movie premiere tonight. We're going to go ahead and start the movie here after you, but thank you so very much, Dr. Darson, for your time and efforts and just giving us a little brief synopsis of what you do in the community and just giving us a little bit about human trafficking. My pleasure. Thank you. You enjoy your evening. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, I believe that concludes, um, our, that does not conclude. Hello, Miss Sonia, how are you? I think you're on mute. Are you trying to conclude without me? <laughs> you know what? I couldn't. I know something. I know I was missing something. I said, let me draw back. OK, how are you this evening? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm amazing. I do want to say thank you for gracing us, um, gracing our carpet um, on this evening. Thank you so very much. I know you're a busy, busy, busy woman in the community, but I do want to say I thank you for that. Thank you. Good to be here tonight. Absolutely. So just to give us a brief synopsis of who you are and what you do in the community. So I am Sonia Irby. I'm president of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women Incorporated, the Dallas Metropolitan Chapter. We are a 40 year old advocacy organization and we advocate on behalf of black women and girls to promote leadership development, gender equity in three key areas, health, education and economic empowerment. Wow, that's that's a lot. How do you it's say a lot, right? It's a mouthful. Jeez, Louise. Yeah. So, Miss Sonia, I have one question for you. Okay, so it was a very very basic question. In your opinion, what is human trafficking? Uh, in my opinion, human trafficking is really modern day slavery. It is taking yeah. a person against their will and uh, forcing them into a life that they have not chosen. Um, mm -hmm. It is a, a crime that is leaves people mentally and physically and psychologically scarred. Um, and so it's it's something that is is can be hidden in plain sight. It's not a crime that that people can often look and see a scar or see a bruise. Um, often these victims are right right in our communities, right in our neighborhood, and we have no way of identifying them. And sometimes they have to self identify in order right. to get the help that they need. Absolutely, that is very very great great answer. Great answer. Um, again, thank you so very much um, for your you. time, Ms. Sonia, and uh, we look forward to seeing you um, watch the movie premiere. Thank you, thank you, thank you for gracing us this evening. All right. Thank you, Maurice. Good to see you again. Good to see you as well. Take care. I believe we have one more that we're going to wrap this up and go ahead and watch the movie. All right. Doctor, this is Dr. Dartson again. Does I have the right name? Well, uh, I'm the president of Lyft, but I don't think you're interviewing me. Are you interviewing me? Are you interviewing I believe me? so, yes. Come on now. Wait, 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 wait. wait, how are you? You look so familiar. I want because you just interviewed my twin sister. <laughs> See? And let me tell you, you know, as a physician, I am a physician. We have to be certified in yeah. human trafficking. And Tanya is on the state's, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, I don't want to say formulary, but she's there. And I yeah. was like, I know her. Her story was so touching. And yeah. um, but go ahead. Let me not. End, um, no, you're good. I want us to just give me a brief synopsis of who you are and what you do in the community. 
Okay. Well, I, by trade, I'm a, I'm a physician. I'm a podiatrist. I'm also a podcaster. I have a, a cigar brand. I ha- I'm a filmmaker, a writer. I do a lot of stuff. I, I wear lots of hats. Wow. That's amazing. Aren't you a formal AKA too? I don't know if this has nothing to do with I that. am an Alpha Kappa Alpha woman. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I see. So with the store of the forest, the president of uh, Wonder Women. But you yes. know, the important thing, you know, for us is then uh, we have to know how to recognize the signs of human trafficking, not yeah. just sex trafficking, but labor trafficking. Is there are so many things that you have to look at when you see when people come into your office, do they have chemical burns? Are they are they working too hard? Are they, you know, how they engage you if they come in with another person? Usually when they come in the office, they come right. with someone if they ha- if they come in, they come in with someone and they don't give you eye contact. The person they're with speaks for them. They have no voice. So there are yeah. certain things that we look for in our practices, you know, yeah. and also trying to create a safe space for them and, and getting trust and making sure that we're not judging. Yes. That's really good that you said that. And also mm-hmm. it, it goes back to this one question I have for you. How are teens usually recruited in um, trafficking? You know, it, I know there's so many methods or whatever the case may be, but just give us enlighten us about that. I mean, um, usually start they start with forming trust. Mm. You know, uh, sometimes you know maybe kids, you know how sometimes kids can be they don't have to be rebellious, but maybe they may be rebellious and they may lean on a, a person and they may have get some type of understanding and then they just kind of trick them and ease them into it and cause them to be dependent on them. You know, yeah. they may threaten them and tell them, you know, uh, they'll kill their family or or make them think that they're so worthless that they're the only person that cares about them, but they make them do that. And the same also with, with labor. You know, they need the money, they need to the work. Uh, most of the labor trafficking comes from people who are not, uh, who are uh, illegal immigrants. Yes. So, you know, so they're gonna tolerate that because they don't wanna be deported. Wow, that's really, really good. That's very, very, very good insight about that. I really appreciate that. We're definitely not going to hold your time up. We're a little bit behind schedule, but we do thank you, the board, the president, the ladies in film and television. We thank you for gracing our carpet on this evening. You look well, amazing. We thank you, ladies in film and television. Thank you and every, all the panelists. We appreciate you Absolutely. all. Absolutely. It's my greatest pleasure. And I, we look, I look forward to you know connecting with you in the future. And again, thank you for gracing our carpet on this evening. And you're welcome. All right. All right, you guys. I believe that is our last. We do have one more. We do have one more. Can we have one more or we're good? It's us. We're going to go ahead and close it out. I want to give a special thanks to our sponsors. Yes. Four Core Media and Business Consulting Group, National Coalition of 100 Black Women. Absolutely. Studios, Ladies in Film and Television, and 94.5 Magic FM. I'm Shana Stone with Maurice Maurice Johnson, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. Until next time.